Now, of course, the whole data science workflow is more than just doing some machine learning. And I want to show you a little bit about what you might do as a next step. Of course, one of the most, a lot of the work of the data science is the early steps of getting the import and reshaping the data and dealing with uh, bad data and missing data and all of those issues, but we don't have time to cover that in, in this video. But let's look at how you might deploy that model once you've created it, if you're doing more than simply your own personal research. So as an example, let's create another uh, classifier model. This time I'm going to take the survival, uh, the manifest of the Titanic and who survived and who died. So I'm going to build a quick classifier function of that. And the idea is that I can take some data here and make a prediction about whether or not that uh, passenger will have survived or died. So uh, I would obviously travel first class and a male, and so my prediction would be died. So I've got that ready to use, but I want to make it available for other people to be able to use it. And I'm going to look at quickly two ways you can do that. One is within some kind of production system where we're making it available for another computer program to use it. And the other is to make it available for, for humans to use. But they basically work the same way. The idea is that within, uh, within the language, there's a way of describing APIs, application programming interfaces, that I can set up as a cloud-based RESTful web service. So here I've got the function, which is just to call my classifier. So this is the classifier I just built. And then I'm going to uh, set up an API function that, and I have to get a little bit of information about what to expect, that it's going to get three arguments, a class which is going to be a string, an age which is going to be a number, and sex which is going to be a string. This is because the web's not got any kind of typing information to be able to pass that stuff across. And then I'm going to deploy that to the cloud, and I'm going to set the permissions for that to be public so that anyone in the world can use this API. And now that I've uh, pushed that to the cloud, we've got a URL here for it, and we can go there and point a web browser at it, and you can see that we get some kind of JSON response that could be interpreted uh, by a computer program. And I, it's failed here because I haven't given it the parameters that I expected, so uh, it's giving me a failure message that I didn't give it the class, the age, and the sex. So then what we want to be able to do is to call that from other programming languages. So here I am calling it from within the Wolfram language, which is kind of pointless since I'm already in the language, but I can say execute on that URL that we just set up, this address, these values, and we get the same answer as we had a moment ago, except that now we're running it uh, remotely off this website. But of course, the real use for this is if we want to make it available to other programming languages, and so we have this uh, utility command here to take that and say, give me a snippet of Java that would allow me to do uh, Titanic survival classification from within Java language. So this is the code that you would need to make a web services call uh, to Java or to say, let's say, to C Sharp, um, uh, so I can make these calls from various languages. Now, one practical way you might want to do that as well is through other applications that, and there are various programs that do know a little bit about being able to read from web services, um, and those that don't can be set up to very often using their own APIs. So here, for example, is how you might deploy this to an Excel user. I've got a simple Excel spreadsheet here, uh, and I've got uh, my inputs, as before, but this final cell here says call the Wolfram API and here's the name that I gave it. And if you go back here, you can see that was the name that I gave it here. So that's how I'm referencing it and telling it where the parameters come from. So now as I change this around, let's make this a 20 year old, I'm now able to do this uh, prediction within, um, uh, within Excel, but behind the scenes what's happening is it's calling a website and asking it for the answer. The other way you might deploy it is simply straight to the end user. And the way to do that is almost identical. We have a concept of a form page, which is just like the API function, we have to tell it a little bit of information about what to expect. And in this case, I can specify a bit more like the choice of uh, options so that I get a slightly more optimized user interface. And then the same function that it's going to run on this page is exactly this classifier that we just built, uh, except I'm add a bit of styling information to make it a 100 point font so that it looks decent on screen. So there's what the interface looks like. And then I deploy it to the cloud to give it a URL. It's made one up for me here because I didn't tell it where I wanted it to go. And now I can point anyone in the world to this web page and they can choose their class and their age and their sex and get their prediction out of that website. So the whole process of going from 
uh, the data to the classification to deploying it is not is not something that you can do without some coding, but it's three, four lines of code uh, for straightforward cases. And we've done a classification, built a machine learning classifier, pushed it to a website, and set up either web services or web pages that uh, allow us to access it and, and deploy that to anyone we want. So to sum up the series, uh, really, while I've talked about quite a lot of issues, the bits of the Wolfram language that you need to be able to go and replicate this are fairly limited. Classification, you only need to know about the commands classify and net train. For prediction, the command is predict. Sequence prediction, it's sequence predict. And feature extractor extraction is the main command within the unsupervised and cluster classify. You can find out more about those commands at reference.wolfram.com, where you'll find full documentation on the whole Wolfram language. And you can try some of these things out for free in the, in the Wolfram public cloud, uh, where you can just create an account and start doing uh, basic uh, machine learning right there in the web browser. Or get your hands on a license of Mathematica, install it on your desktop, and uh, use the full power of your own CPU. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>